Okay, team, let's look at number nine on the Foundations of Reading exam. I'll read it over first, and then we'll talk through some of the ideas in the activity and work through the answers. Let's read it first. Number nine, a teacher shows a student pictures of familiar objects. As the teacher points to the first picture, she asks the student to name the object in the picture. Next, she asks the student to count on his fingers the number of sounds he makes as he says the word again. This activity is most likely to promote which of the following? And then we have these options here. A, understand the alphabetical principle. B, phonemic awareness skills. C, develop of letter sound correspondence. Or D, word identification skills. Again, another kitchen sink problem. When I say kitchen sink, I mean they're throwing in all these ideas. So let's circle them. We have word identification skills. Letter sound correspondence, AKA phonics. That's when a student matches up letters with sounds to decode an unfamiliar word. Phonemic awareness skills. Now that's the one involving sound, but more specifically, the one involving sound, the phonological awareness skill involving sound involving those specific phonemes. So remember, phonological awareness has to do with hearing sound, and we can break phonological awareness up into those three levels, the word, syllable, and phoneme level. And phonemic awareness is that level, that advanced level of phonological awareness, having to do with hearing, identifying individual phonemes within a word, the top part of this uh, graphic organizer, this part here. Okay, just, just reviewing all these ideas. And then C, understanding the alphabetical principle. And if you've done these videos with me, you've seen all these appear multiple times, right? I mean, we've seen alphabetical principle appear on these phonemic awareness and phonological awareness questions, and every time it's been crossed off, right? So you're, you need to know that uh, when we're talking about pure sound, some of these things are going to get crossed off. But let's just review the alphabetical principle. That has to do with print and the alphabet. And we take our alphabet, our letters. And the alphabetical principle has to do with matching up the predictable sounds with the letters in the alphabet. And it's taking a letter or grapheme and matching up with its predictable phonemes. For example, A can make the short sound. The A can make the short A like A, ah, like in cat, or the long A like A, like in cake. In this activity, the teacher is showing the student pictures of objects. And these are everyday objects, like a pen or a marker. And they ask the student to name the object. So let me circle that. So the student is orally identifying what this is, a marker or pen. I'll use this one right here. What's this? A pen. So the student is orally producing the language. There's no print involved. And then the teacher wants the student to what? Count up the sounds count the sounds on their fingers. So if we were using this pen here for a moment, the student would be like, p, e, n. I hear three sounds in the word pen. Now what is the student doing in this activity? Well, what are they not doing? Well, they're not doing anything with print. So any of these options that have to do with print, we could cross them out. So let's take a second look at A, B, C, and D. A, is the alphabetical principle, and that has to do with matching up print with the predictable sounds. It's got to have that print, and this activity doesn't have print. We could cross it out. What about C? C has to do with letter sound correspondence, and letters are print, and we're doing an activity with no print. We could cross that out too. What about D? D has to do with word identification skills, like using context clues and and having awareness of sight words and using structural word analysis to break down a multi-syllable word. All these things that have to do with identifying words that are made up of letters, which are all print, you can cross that out. One way to eliminate A, C, and D is just to know that this activity has to do with sound, pure sound, and not print. If we know it has nothing to do with print, we could cross these out and we'd get to B. Or we could recognize that this, this activity is a lot like Alconan boxes or a lot like some phonemic awareness activity that has the student isolate the individual phonemes in a word. This is a phonemic awareness skill. So maybe you get to it that way. When you read this question, you say, you know what? 
this is a sound activity, a phonemic awareness activity, the answer has got to be B. Lots of different ways to analyze this question, okay? It's a great question because you get that practice of seeing why it's B. And also, I want you to go back and, and realize why it can't be A, C, or D. Great problem. Let's continue. Hi, team. This is Chris Abraham from Go Academy. If you like this video, press the like button below or subscribe to our channel. This allows us to do more videos for teachers on their teacher certification exams. And if you need additional help, you can come and check out a Go Academy workshop or webinar or tutoring. You go to www.goacademy.com. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye.